Khan Meditations. Hello guys. Today we're talking about symbols. Can symbols be bad? Today we're going to be going over Masonic symbols, religious symbols, and symbols across all civilizations. Because symbols, symbols have played a crucial role in human history and continue to be an integral part of our culture to this very day. Across civilizations, symbols have been used to represent ideas, values, beliefs, and even entire cultures. They have the power to convey meaning and evoke emotions without the use of words, and they can be found in every aspect of our lives, from flags that represent nations, to logos that represent entire companies. In ancient civilizations, symbols were often used as a way to communicate with gods or to represent spiritual or mystical concepts. The ancient Egyptians, for example, used symbols such as the Ankh, the Eye of Horus, and the Scarab Beetle to represent life, protection, and rebirth. The ancient Greeks used symbols like the trident to represent medicine and the sea. Today, symbols continue to be an important part of our society. They are a universal language that can be understood by people of all cultures and have the power to evoke strong emotions and convey meaning without saying a word. Today, we're going to be discussing different symbols, what they mean, can they be evil, and we'll dissect these symbols in real time. The first symbol we're going to be talking about today is the Ankh, the symbol of eternal life in union between male and female. Created in ancient Egypt, circa 3000 BC, but we know that the symbol a lot more ancient than that. In my estimations, around 30,000 BC. Wow. So, this symbol has been used in Egypt throughout constant changes, kings, pharaohs, different people in power, priests, and of course, the emerald tablets of Thoth. Thoth himself has always carried Really? As a symbol of life, knowledge, and again, the union between the male and female. I didn't know that's what it represented. Yes. This is, of course, I always wear an onk on me at all times. And um, just recently, actually, Billy Carson actually went through and talked about the onk and the symbol of the onk. And even said that the onk um, was used as a key to get through different dimensions portals and people would wear these onks on them and whenever they had the onk on them it would be attuned to their own frequency so it's a frequency attuned device so once this onk was attuned to their frequency only they could pass through the portals if you try to wear someone else's onk that was attuned to their frequency and pass through these portals you would perish immediately that is insane. What do they estimate? How long ago? 3000 BC. I but feel like they always estimate stuff to be like 3000 to 1000 to 0 yeah. BC. But it's always way, way, way. Yeah. Tens if of you're watching years. this and you're one of our followers or our fans and you like our channel and you do research for yourself, you know that the Ankh is way, way older than 3000 BC. Way older than 5,000 years old. I mean, this thing is at least 20, 30,000 years old. Especially originating from Egypt. We all know that Egypt started out way, way, way before what they say. Exactly. And these symbols are universal in a sense, in which all time is now. So if you know that all time is now, you know that these symbols 
are always going um, through time, through the ethereum of time, being downloaded by different mm-hmm. people in different time, but it's all now. So we all have that knowledge within our brains. Whenever you go through deep meditation, you can summon that knowledge into your brain. And I've seen the Ankh symbols in meditation, and I've seen different symbols that are right. very powerful that I ended up writing down in meditation. And then before I knew it, I started wanting to wear the arm. And that goes back mm-hmm. to the, the theory that Billy Carson had where these uh, ancient beings wore these Ankh symbols and uh, were able to go through portals with them. Because if you truly think about it, I mean, in your mind, if these ancient people and our ancient uh, relatives and ancestors wore these Ankhs, Mm-hmm. to go through portals don't you believe that we would be more attuned to wearing them as well yeah I do and I think you know we discuss a lot that uh, when it comes to symbols or things like that or just certain rituals things like that is there's so much as you said 30,000 years of putting the same type of energy into this symbol and I think that alone that collective intentional energy yep. gives it meaning itself but when I see these symbols like the way my mind works is I'm always like okay but why and how like I always want to know how things like first start like I wonder who how did this symbol come into existence who's the first one who discovered it did they discover it in meditation did a alien tell them about it did they how did they find it and how do they know the meaning and how did it get spread across and and I always just wonder that, like, how did it get started? Yeah. So, you know, what I'm just saying is that over, if people are wearing these for that intention, it makes sense that over time, their relatives, their ancestors will just be called to wear the symbol on them. Yeah. Not even necessarily knowing what it means or what it's for. Right. But you just call. Mm-hmm. And even if you look at the arm, you can see the symbol and you can see... Um, the ancient technology that went into it. Some people show the light bulb and electricity and how it goes forth into the Ankh. I mean, this stuff is deep. And this stuff really transcends time. It's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, I never ever knew that. I knew that the Ankh you were very called to. I knew it had to do with Egypt, but I actually never really knew a whole lot about the meaning, especially that they could, what did you say? Um, uh, they could dimensions. go through portals and portals. travel through dimensions, and essentially That's it was insane. a key. Oh yeah, so it, it was like your own key. key to go through. You wow. wore it, but if someone tried to steal it, it was attuned to your frequency. Wow. So, so I wonder who was making these, like a special special sorcerers and stuff like that that could like craft it with that type of intentional energy. I mean, for there's them. high level beings and hidden technology and ancient technology that's lost. In Right. That we don't have anymore. That did exist back then, but now it's lost in time. Right. So, moving on to the second symbol we're going to talk about today is the cross symbol. Hmm. Now, I wear a cross as well. And to me, the cross might represent something different than what it represents to others. But everyone knows the cross representing the death and resurrection of Yeshua. So, in my mind, the cross represents the resurrection because I don't believe the, the lesson that Yeshua was trying to teach was one about death. It was a more about eternal life and living forever. So Absolutely. in a sense, it's almost like an aunt as well. And the symbols actually do look similar. Right. But to right. me, it's about the eternal life and resurrection because you always have that eternal life within you. And just knowing that and feeling that and knowing that you are infinite at all times is very important. People need to know that and realize that they are truly infinite. Yes. And that's an interesting note to make because, again, I did not know about the Ankh representing male and female energy coming together. But if you do look at the cross, the Ankh is essentially the cross with a circle on top and feminine yeah. energy tend, tends to be curvaceous and, and you know round rounded yeah. out yeah. and male energy is more hard lines and stuff like that so that's really interesting because it's literally just a cross with a more feminine type symbol on it so that is very interesting so the third symbol we're going to be talking about is the crescent moon of islam 
This is a very important symbol because it coincides with the lunar calendar, which also coincides with different holidays in the religion of Islam. It also has to do with the concept of divine guidance and protection. And also, in some interpretations, the crescent moon symbolizes the first revelation of the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad. So if we just look at this symbol, it's a moon and it's usually associated with a star as well. Mm -hmm. And a lot of symbols we see nowadays, whether it's with religion or anything, a company, mm -hmm. ancient symbols, a lot of it has to do with the moon. A lot of it has to do with, you know, astrology and mm -hmm. astronomy mm -hmm. and the actual stars in the star system. And to me, these are some of the most beautiful ones because every day and every night, there's someone on the earth that is looking up at the stars. And especially if you're in a place that uh, doesn't have that much pollution, you can see the stars as they were thousands of years ago. And if you have never seen the stars as they were thousands of years ago, I would highly encourage you to go look at those stars. Nothing I mean, like get that. somewhere where it's very dark, whether you're out in the middle of the ocean, on a fishing trip, or on vacation, or whether you just go to Wyoming, or one of these desolate deserts uh, around the world. You have to see it. You have to. Make sure that's on your bucket list if you've never seen it. And if you're fortunate enough to be in a place where you can see it, then you're very lucky. Take advantage of that energy. Make sure you really feel that energy. Because when you go out there and you look at these stars, I'm telling you, it's an enlightening experience that will change your whole reality. It really is. We experienced it in Wyoming on a road trip, and you could literally, truly see how the sky looked. You could make out the Milky Way, everything. It was like almost, it was just awe inspiring. It was almost like a, it was almost like shocking to see because <laughs> it's just like, you realize how small you are and how much is just truly possible, how much is really out there. And it was just a, a really one of those just life shattering experience and experiences that you'll never forget. And it's kind of it's one of those interesting things. Cause if you think about it, no matter where you are in the in the earth, even if you can't see the stars, they're still all there, which is an interesting thing to think about. But just truly seeing those with your eyes, seeing the Milky Way, it's just like, wow, we are part of this. Look at all these stars in the Milky Way, just the ones yep. I can see. And we're just one little planet in yep. just one little galaxy. It's very beautiful. Number four, the fourth symbol we're going to talk about is the Star of David. This symbol is important for a lot of religious people, and it has to do with uh, the religion Judaism. So, if you're unfamiliar with it, which I'm sure you've seen it, because this symbol has been used for over 2,000 years. This symbol can be found on ancient artifacts, mm -hmm. coins, um, just different artifacts all around the world that they find. They're digging these artifacts up. They're finding older and older artifacts with the Star of David on it. Some people interpret it as six directions. Mm -hmm. North, east, south, west, up, and down. Also, if you look at the Star of David, the lines are interlocked together, mm -hmm. which also can symbolize the connection between people and God. It's mm -hmm. a very interesting and powerful symbol. And the number six is used throughout all different cultures. And it represents different powerful meanings throughout different cultures. So just for example, in Chinese culture, the number six represents flow because the word six in Chinese kind of sounds like the word flow and it just represents that in that mm -hmm. culture. In Hindu culture, the number six is uh, interpreted as a lucky number mm -hmm. and it's also associated with the planet Venus. Mm -hmm. And I know in Japanese culture, the number six is also associated with cardinal direction as well. Interesting. So this is a very cool symbol. That represents a lot of different things. And it's very interesting. It's very cool. What do you think? Yeah, that's cool. I read a book on the uh, ancient 
essentially Mexican cultures, Mayans, Aztecs, Toltecs. Yep. Yep. And uh, within the Mayan calendar, there's so many, so many symbols. The whole thing is just a combination of symbols, and it's all mathematically equated, and it's, it's really cool, the, the calendar. It's, I recommend looking into information about it. But they are also very into the cardinal directions, and there's representations of that as well, north, south, east, west, and things like that. So, I like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So the next symbol we're going to talk about, and now we're going to kind of get into Masonic imagery and masonry. And kind mm-hmm. of talk about, are these symbols bad? Are they evil? Are they just yes. normal symbols? Mm-hmm. I mean, w- what's going on with this stuff? We're really going to break it down and talk about this today. So, for the fifth symbol, we're going to be talking about the Delta symbol. Mm-hmm. The Delta Masonic symbol is a symbol that is used in Masonic symbolism. And it's a triangle with a horizontal line through the center. And it's often depicted with the letter G at the center. The Delta is a symbol of change and transformation. And it's associated with the concept of dying of self in order to become a better person. So are these symbols evil? In my mind, in my estimation, these are not evil symbols. The symbols itself are not evil. It's the interpretation of these symbols. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the um, the triangle with the eye in the mm. middle, the third eye in the middle. A lot of that is the Delta symbol and comes along with the masonry symbol. But what it represents in masonry, like I said, is the dying of self to become better. So people don't realize whenever you become more and more enlightened and because all time is now, you are a new person every instant in time. Therefore, you are constantly going through different dimensions of time, constantly, and you are becoming a new person always. But you have to realize that and understand that. So whenever you whenever you get to that version of yourself to, to dying to become a better version, it's almost as if you take a psychedelic drug and you believe you're dying. You mm-hmm. see your death. You have an ego death mm-hmm. experience. And through these ego death experiences, you can become a better version of yourself. You mm-hmm. can become renewed through these ego death experiences. And that's what that represents to me. It's not about good or evil. It's about what you choose the symbol to represent in your mind. And if there is a negative symbol that you just can't see as positive, then you probably shouldn't use that symbol. Yeah, I mean, really, it's like if you're losing your ego, you're just becoming more of your true self because your ego is not your true self. So the more you detach from that, the more you become what your true essence is, which is the highest version of yourself, pure light, pure soul. And I don't know much about the Masonic uh religion or is that what it is a religion masonic um, it's, group it's, it's more just a way of life in a sense. Okay. well the masonic group i don't know much about them i know they can get a bad rep and things like that but since i don't know too much of course i'm not going to judge delta that's in that's interesting to me that it's called that i wonder if it has to do with like delta waves delta frequency which does have healing aspects to it and i think that's one of the waves that occur when we sleep if I'm not mistaken, um, which, of course, lots of changes can occur while we sleep. Uh, so that's interesting. I would be interested in doing more research on that. But as we know as well, there's the symbols with, you know, the Illuminati, they say, with the triangle. Is it real? Is it not? Who knows? Really, if you think about it, isn't that on the dollar bill or one of the bills is kind of like a pyramid or a triangle and yep. it has like the eye on it? Mm-hmm. I think the symbols of the money, um, dollar bills and things like that, the U.S. one, is interesting. I know yeah, there's theories I mean, and stuff on masonry that. Masonry is very uh, ingrained in our culture as Americans. It's very ingrained in our culture. The founding fathers themselves were Mason. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is where the whole Illuminati concept comes into play. Right. This is where it gets spooky with the Illuminati stuff right here. This is where it gets <laughs> weird. Okay, this is where it can get a little, a little free, weird, I a mean, little strange. It can be a little much for people. If you want to see a video breaking down the Illuminati, 
uh, let us know. We'll break that whole thing down because there's a lot to discuss with that. But uh, Yeah, I mean, literally the so-called Illuminati symbols are on the dollar bill or one of the dollar bills, which is really, really interesting. Yep. And I don't know, because you'll constantly see, you know, musicians and things like that, uh, rappers, hip hop artists typically, uh, as well as pop using these symbols and sometimes i definitely think it's like it's kind of just to uh draw more attention in and get more views and things like that kind of just for the controversy uh but it's interesting because i actually am a reiki practitioner yep. so for those not familiar symbols are very prevalent in reiki and that has actually been one of my first times really really using symbols and i use them every single day but I know they're very very powerful but along with my Reiki I get downloads and messages as well and it's very interesting one time I got this message that it was basically saying that there's kind of an intergalactic union for the entire universe oh wow yes and okay. I actually have heard people talk about this before yeah. they have gotten downloads about this we can speak about this if you guys want to hear more Yes. We, this is something we can definitely speak about <laughs> with clarity. So An intergalactic union of beings. Mm-hmm. So kind of like um, the United Nations or something here on Earth, but it's for the entire universe because yep. there's a lot of planets out there and we do look out for each other. So uh, I basically just said that those in the union, there's a symbol that we all do. And it, it was something I never really thought about before. And it basically said, if you think about it, no matter where you are in the universe, no matter what planet, no matter what galaxy, there's one thing that keeps us all going. Every single universe has what? A sun. We all have a sun that powers us. A beautiful, bright ball of white light giving us energy nonstop. And I basically just saw all these different types of beings from, you know, reptoid to human looking to humanoid to um, praying mantis all the beings that you can think about, all types. And they were just all actually, funny enough, doing this triangle symbol and like you just hold it to the sun. And I basically got that this is the intergalactic symbol that they all do. And it, you hold it to the sun because it's uniting every single person in the intergalactic uh, federation or whatever it's called. <laughs> Um, so you saw reptoids, different beings, alien beings, yeah, extraterrestrials it was just like a line of doing them. this symbol to the sun. So-called, I mean, just because it's a triangle. Uh, was oh, absolutely. Okay. There's only love within this okay. whole thing. There can only you can only reach that level of of an enlightenment being to talk to other beings through meditation or through your mind through love it has to be a very uh, high frequency i mean you can be well yeah in another way but, but but the point you're trying to make is you, the level that you're on and the vibration that you're on is one of love so like yeah. attracts like and since you're on the vibration of love and harmony that's what you're gonna attract. yeah and this was just you know you could just tell this was purely good beings like this intergalactic union is yep. To help and to serve the higher good completely and nothing evil about it so pretty interesting to know okay. so i don't necessarily think um something like that is evil uh after that i think it can be good okay. and it, okay. at the end of the day it is just a triangle i mean you dry start drawing triangles as a kid exactly and try this symbol um to the sun when you get the chance don't burn your eyes out but try it and you'll feel immense power, feel the love and gratitude mm -hmm. for the sun while yeah. you do it. And uh, just, just feel that, that, that deep love and that deep experience. Mm -hmm. The next symbol we're going to be going over is the fleur de lis. You speak French a lot better than me, so maybe you could say it. Uh, je peux parler un petit peu, but yeah, I, I think it's pronounced fleur de lis. So this is another Masonic symbol that represents the perfection of the individual. So each petal on the fleur de lis represents a different aspect of the individual. The head, the heart, and the hands. And 
when I when I first saw that in doing my research for this video, it kind of reminded me of one of the things in the Emerald Tablets. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing a reading of the Emerald Tablet on my channel. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, but one of the things that Phil said is that the only thing that matters is the perfection of the soul. Nothing else is important. You can't take anything else with you. When you leave this world, the only thing that matters is the perfection of the soul. And that's mm -hmm. it. So each day, we're all striving for perfection mm -hmm. of the soul. So just keep that in mind as you're going throughout your day. And a lot of these symbols, you've seen mm -hmm. in some way, in some form. But now we're really getting into it so you can actually know what they represent and what they mean. And you won't be confused by it whenever you see it in the future. Yeah, once you pulled it up, I did recognize that symbol. I know that's a big symbol for um, for France. So that's cool to know a little bit more meaning about it. I think I remember in high school, like in French club or, or something, I think we put it on our French club shirts or something like that. But yeah, I know it's a big symbol for, for France. And that's interesting. And what else is interesting is... The emerald tablets, I mean, there's so many, I find so many connections in those tablets to like so many, so many texts. I mean, yep. there's connections yep. in the Bible, of course, the Hermetic principles, which everyone says that Thoth and Herm Hermes were the same person. But even um, the book I was telling you guys about, about the ancient Toltecs and Mayans, there's connections there as well, which again, they say that the one that came to the ancient um, Mayans, uh, I forget how to pronounce his name exactly, uh, te te Tecateoco, that's totally not right, but it's something yeah. like that, but they say he's both too, so... Teotihuacan, I believe. Hmm, say it again? Teotihuacan. Maybe, but either way. So, it's very, very interesting. Um... Uh. like te Tecateoto or something. Who took both the ancient Mayans? Teotihuacan is a city. No, that's not it. Oh, okay. Well, we'll, 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 we'll place it in the video so you guys can see. Yes, yeah, it's on. We'll do the research and then I'll put it up. Um, okay, let's go over another symbol. Um, so... We already did the delta symbol for the masonry, but the next symbol we're going to go over is just the simple triangle. It's actually not the same thing when it comes to masonic imagery. The delta symbol and the triangle represent two different things. So we already went over the delta symbol, but the triangle itself actually represents divine presence mm -hmm. and unity between male and female. Mm -hmm. So. If you guys have noticed already, a lot of these symbols represent the unity between the male and the female. Because one of the things that I know for a fact is that male and female, masculine and feminine energy, exist mm -hmm. throughout all cultures, throughout all time, throughout mm -hmm. all existence. There is always male and female, masculine and feminine. Yeah. So the union of these two is whenever you begin to have true power. That's why I'm so lucky to have a nice, beautiful wife that helps me in the process <laughs> because the divine union of the male and the female is very important. Yeah, it's kind of funny because I feel that like you, I don't know, we're, we're almost like perfect masculine and feminine energy coming together because I feel like you are pretty much like i'm you know everyone's on like a little bit of a spectrum i'm you know you're mostly masculine with a little touch of feminine or whatever it may be but i feel like you're just totally totally masculine like i don't know much feminine attributes that you have like if i don't really know any and i feel that i'm like basically totally totally feminine like there's not really any masculine traits to me so we are like the perfect yin yang coming together and so that's really cool. 
And just an added bonus symbol, I actually saw this today from the wood person as well, from uh, the Bluetooth the Bluetooth symbol. Mm. It's actually uh, named after um, a Viking, I believe, hmm. named Bluetooth, who actually united uh, two clans or two cultures together. Wow. So whenever you're actually searching for Bluetooth, you're actually uniting two devices together. So that's kind of yeah. an interesting little thing there as well. That's um, really cool. So, oh, so that Bluetooth symbol is mm-hmm. from yep. him? Yeah, and you could see the symbol actually looks pretty like Scandinavian. Yeah, I never you know, thought it about looks like that. Um, you know, Viking in nature. And I'm actually, I'm actually no, 10% Scandinavian, so I know you about are. all this stuff. So. <laughs> Just naturally. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one's really cool. So, um, this video has been going on for a while, so maybe we'll do a part two if people like this. But the last symbol I want to talk about is the the tree of life. Mm. So, obviously, uh, the symbol is represented in different cultures, Judaism, Christianity, throughout a lot of different cultures. But it symbolizes, you know, your family tree. It symbolizes the birth of uh, humanity and, and it growing. It, it symbolizes the earth itself. But to me, the symbol also symbolizes... Um, and leads back to the Emerald Tablets as well. And this is just something that I believe and I research. Mm-hmm. It's just that the Tree of Life symbolizes to me as above, so below. Yeah. Where if you look at a tree and the branches and how the tree branches out and upward, the bottom of the tree is the roots. So mm-hmm. the bottom of the tree actually looks like the top of the tree as well. Yeah. So it just represents that dualism and that duality of as above so below the same as you go up high is the same down below just a different perspective yeah i think the same exact i automatically go to as above so below when i see that symbol yep. but yeah that's a very beautiful thing and we see that a lot in nature where the micro is looks exactly the same as the macro such as what is it? i think when they look at like the neuron in an eyeball or yep. maybe it's actual yeah, it br- no it's like a neuron, a neuron in if your you brain. just look at the retina it looks yeah, like the retina, yeah, and your eyeball, same with the neuron in your brain. It looks, you can do side-by-side pictures, it looks just like it. We see that all over. And so, eyes above, so below. Same thing with snowflakes. Yeah, snowflakes are beautiful. If you look at snowflakes, it looks like the uh, crystal. Right, crystalline flake. little crystal. Yep. Some even have colors inside, because there's actually, there's photographer who does he takes all all pictures of snowflakes mm-hmm. all over the world yep. really really beautiful and some of his pictures in the very middle it's literally like rainbow reflecting just like a crystal yeah. like inside a tiny tiny yeah. it's incredible snowflake. Stuff. Yeah. so those are just some symbols guys overall i believe that um i believe symbols are, are neutral in a sense but they represent a larger picture you can look at symbols like how i said in the monologue earlier you look at a stop sign Mm -hmm. and you know to stop right you look at the walk sign you know you can walk there's different symbols that allow you to communicate without speaking actual words Mm. so just seeing these symbols can trigger something in your mind and your memory to allow you to think differently to allow you to know more to allow you to feel more within your mind and your body you have to take notice of these things and never believe in anything negative. I don't believe in anything that takes power away from me. I only believe in positivity and love and light. Definitely. Remember that and take that into your day. Thank you for watching the video. If you want more, let us know. And let Thank us you. know what your favorite symbol is or exactly. what, what you're drawn to if there's any symbols out there. Yeah. Write your favorite symbol down below. Write if you learned anything new. We're going to be doing a lot more videos, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you.